the final of our online presentations. Our next one will be uh, Miss Sarah Jang from Bottle Loop, uh, who will be, uh, will be sharing us our next case study. Oh, so I'll try to be fast. <laughs> I'm just running up. There we go. There we go. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you all, His Excellency and dear guests. I'll be here representing Bottle Loop and Income Recycle. Uh, try to uh, give a example, try to give an example of the exploration of innovative mm -hmm. solution for Chinese environmental protection industry. Here, okay, I won't explain more. Here, all the guests are the experts or working in the industry related. So the structural con contradiction between massive consumption and huge waste has become the common crisis globally. But also challenges that Chinese environmental protection industry are facing are crucial for a few reasons that maybe all of us, all of you guys are very familiar. We have large population, we have complex industrial uh, structures, Although the common awareness of environmental protection is rising up among people these days, but it takes long time and they need guidance for action. So Botloop um, tries to look back to find inspirations for these solutions. So as you see, the Qingming Shanghe Tu we draw inspiration from traditional Chinese culture to cope with the modern plastic crisis. Uh, we, in ancient times, we believe, pursue harmony between humanity and nature. We follow the nature's course and we should respect and cherish all things on this planet. So that's how our name come from. As you can see at the top bottom, uh, top, bot loop means bottle and loop. It's a cycle of a bottle. So we are inspired by Chinese Asian wisdom trying to convert the predictory relationship into harmonious relationship between humanity and nature, pursuing a sustainable solution for modern society with universal value. Uh, how we do, okay, I have to mention our parent company who named Income Recycle. Income Recycle was founded in 2003 uh, for a few, for more than 10 years. And uh, Income Recycle has been granted a, a lot of honors, as you can see at the bottom. <laughs> uh, one of the most important I want to emphasize here is uh, Income Recycle has a factory who is the, the non only one in Asia who can produce the food grade chips. So we recycle bottles and then we, okay, it's a big factory and with many, many process, we can produce very clean food grade chips. Uh, it's the only one in Asia. And of course, I want to mention back in 2015, a joint venture company was founded uh, with, together with Norway, Norway Tomra Group, who is, as you know, uh, as it's a leading, world leading recycle collecting and assorting technology group. Okay. Based on uh, income's main business, who is a, a re uh, bottle recycle business, we wonder how we could extend or give a second life of a wasted bottle so that it can be used again in people's daily life. We're just in another form or state 
In this way, somehow the bottle never died. And the production, waste reproduction and reuse circle can be repeated. That's how we are founded, bot loop. So as you, it, you can see part of the picture, which is highlights of the 12 steps of a bottle recycle system to turn into another product. It might be a bottle again, but it might be a bag. It might be a, a book. It might be some fabric. So it's a, a complete circle of a bottle's second life. That's our business model. Okay, here are some um, highlights of our uh, product. We call this treasure bag. It was uh, launched in May 2000, uh, this year. As you, know that, as you may know that the municipal government of uh, Beijing announced the waste classification regulation in May. So this bag has four small, smaller bags in it. It means four different types of garbage. The meaning, our purpose is when you go out, you carry this bag, you can collect all your wastes in your bag. So you don't necessarily throw them away when it's not easy to get access to any garbage can. It was very popular and we were, pub we were invited to uh, be published on many fashion magazines. So it's a very uh, good example for cross-border uh, design. And here is a office, we call it zero waste office set. We always want to provide commonly used products with recycled material and fashionable design. Every day, a large amount of office wisps were thrown away. Of course, they can be recycled, redesigned, and reused again in our office. So this office set is made of total six, 14 bottles and uh, recycled paper, of course. It's a closed loop solution for office, for office wisps. Of course, Bottle Loop has actively cooperated with uh, influential lifestyle brand or platform so that we can be can, our product and our brand can be connected with more younger generation and so as to generate their interests and awareness of environmental protection. Here is a, maybe you know, Modern Sky Strawberry Music Festival. Of course, it's last year. This year, they canceled all the events. So it's last year. We provide on-sport uh, smart recycling machine to collect all the wastes, especially the bottles. And then we co-design the products. See, bags, scarves, and many others, and ring coats. And we, uh, of course, these products are for sale, and uh, the prof some of the profits are going to be uh, are donated to charity foundations to to um, help with to plant more trees. So it's a it's a com complete and uh, all aspects cooperation. Here is with BMW. Um, we co-worked with BMW for the marketing campaign for its new electric automobile this year, just happened a few months ago, and produced a co-branding eco-friendly products. And this is interesting. Uh, it's another, it's a loop example, of course. And as, as you say, this is Pepsi factory and it's their worker wearing uh, the uniform made of 46 bottles. Made, uh, designed and made by us. So with recycled wasted bottles from Pepsi factory, because they have a lot of uh, wasted bottle or not qualified bottles, a lot of waste uh, monthly and daily probably. So we redesigned and reproduced the uniform for the workers. So uh, they can wear in its factory. So their wastes were given a second life and benefits their own workers. Uh, for many events, we provide uh, co-branding product, products as well. It's, it's a bag on the right. Of course, we, but we're also actively uh, involved in uh, cooperating with government missions and to uh, representing Chinese uh, uh, companies globally. Uh, here you can say it's a uh, World Cup 
2018. We provide the smart recycling machine on the spot, and also we designed and made all the uniform for the volunteers with 100% recycled uh, polyester. Uh, this is uh, the UN Youth Climate Summit. Uh, you can see the, the bag in the middle. On top is a Chinese character means, uh, means harmony. And it's, it has been chosen as the official gifts for the Chinese delegation to other delegates. Uh, these are some other uh, uh, brands we are co cooperating with. Uh, Starbucks, Pepsi, Mars, Nestle, uh, many, many. So we're trying to do our small efforts every day, uh, trying to, uh, how to say, to uh, help people to realize in their daily life, they can use recycled material, uh, they can use recycled products. Uh, this is our um, mission, let's say, I would read it. Uh, Bottle wishes to provide a Chinese perspective solution um, on sustainable lifestyle by setting up its business with advanced recycling technology by creative design to turn waste plastic bottles into trendy products so that younger generation can be connected with the, with the real thing. Um, by generating cross-border cooperation so that sustainable lifestyle could be adopted by a wider range of people, not only chi in China, of course. And at last, we hope that a circle of a bottle can be repeated and repeated. Thank you. Thank you very much to Miss Miss Zhang for the introduction of what they're doing at Bottle Loop. Next up is another, uh, just like Mr. Jet Chang earlier, in uh, a person I work close with on a daily basis, or at least close around. Next one is uh, Miss Ma Jingjing of uh, Nordic, who will be sharing uh, the case study of Nordic. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Nicola. Time is a bit late, so I'll keep it sharp. Uh, thank you very much for the inviting us, Nordic. Uh, we are from Denmark, but I have been the one of the key founders that uh, established our Chinese uh, operationals uh, since five years ago. Uh, we are facing the challenges as, uh, as, uh, as our industries, as our cities, and as our uh, societies. Uh, we have the same trends for the fast urbanization. We have the same challenges for the for the more cloud uh, climate impact. We have um, we have the same uh, mega drive for the for the nursing uh, nursing trench, and we also have the um, uh, the, the the big big data uh, smart city um, revitalization of our of 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 our city and and. And society, so we set up. Uh, we set up the Nordic five years ago, trying to tackle the 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 this uh, system challenges for 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 our global uh, global uh, perspective. And uh, today, I would like to share about how we do in China. Um, especially, we are quite inspired by our 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 Xi Jinping's uh, new slogan on the toward. Uh, green China uh, carbon neutrality 2060. Uh, the 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 uh, Dr. Mao Tao shared or, about the the 45 year plan and also our new climate target. So I will just uh, briefly the shot. Um, we can see the the in the 13th five year plan, 
uh, we have been, uh, China has been set up the green uh, development target as the overall national uh, strategy to promote the, the, the coexistence between uh, society and nature. Uh, and by 2035, actually, China is uh, ambitious to be becoming the global innovation leader. And also, China has been uh, really focused on deep integration, deep integrate of the industries, um, like such as internet, uh, big data, and also the AI. I think this is something probably the the, the Europe uh, will will be beneficial a lot from from with China and 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 Europe in the next 15 years. Um, we also have uh, we also can see there will be a very strict uh, target emission cap on the Chinese uh, Chinese uh, gl uh, global emission <laughs> amount. We have uh, we have been. By 2030, uh, we announced uh, the non-fossil fuel uh, compared with the primary energy we will be the overall consumption no more than 25%. And by 2030, um, our uh, carbon emission per GDP will be reduced by uh, 65% compared with the uh, 05 level. And this is like a really like, a, a, we can see the, the very strict uh, uh, cap from the national uh, perspective. And also right now everyone can see the the, the dual uh, the dual uh, circulation uh, market this is also like uh, after COVID-19 and I think everyone not everyone but China we're trying to have really strong uh, inner uh, circular uh, uh, market uh, the body and also the the uh, international uh, uh, economy so how these two circular uh, market trends can be happen uh, in the future five years, that's actually very interesting to see. And of course, as we are here, we, we would like to bring the two circles combine as much as we can. That's why we can make this uh, uh, cooperation more more successful. Uh, this is a more detailed analysis um, about uh, about the Chinese uh, climate uh, target. Um, as I have been personally uh, working on the climate uh, frontier from 04 um, as part of uh, as a study in in Denmark and also educating in Denmark uh, we have been quite actually proud that uh, back to 16 years ago we are developing the first uh, uh, CDM carbon trading methodologies for the based on the Chinese dish reheating uh, projects so that's uh, actually 16 years ago we are trying to bring the the carbon trading into China and trying to say, okay, what is uh, uh, CO two emissions for the country for the for 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 our city, uh, and then the quite happy we can see the the the, the green pass from 09 the in the in the Copenhagen COP uh, COP nine, uh, China has been uh, declared the 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 uh, sixty five percent energy efficiency at that time, and then in the fifteenth uh, five years ago, uh, China has been uh, Talking about the the, the 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 CO2 emission per GDP by 60 to 65 percent, and right now actually it's like a, like four days ago our 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 our, our president has been announced over 65 percent of the CO2 uh, re reduction. So actually we can see, uh, also everyone can see China's really the strong ambitions on tackle the climate change together with with our our very close uh, partners with with, with European Union. Uh, we focus on the green industries. Green industry, our our second uh, second uh, category has been 65, uh, 60, actually 67.7 percent of the CO2 emissions of China. So compared with uh, Europe and the US, actually we have been have more uh, carbon uh, intensive uh, business as compared with EU. And then actually last year the NDRC has been announced this uh, uh, very uh, effective or we can see very useful uh, categories like uh, what kind of industry belong to green industry uh, as a first time because before nobody actually even know what kind of business uh, can be categorized legally in China as green industry. But then we are very happy to see uh, the most of, not most, 100% of, 100 of, of the Danish industries operate in China. It's uh, 
categorized as green industries. And the European unions, um, I don't have the full picture, but I guess majority of the of, of the industries can be belong to this category. And the, mostly they have uh, six uh, six uh, six uh, sub uh, subdivisions like uh, energy conservation and cleaner production, cleaner energy, green infrastructure, upgrading service, and green infrastructure and uh, eco and environmental uh, sectors. So uh, actually, all of these sectors has been also heavily uh, integrated into the 14th five year plan. The, the uh, just now, the Dr. Mao already being emphasized. So actually, I think it, this is really good, uh, good direction. Uh, we, when we talk about the Chinese industrial park, as us working on the planning and the design sector, we can give you uh, like the different uh, versions from '79 uh, when our uh, Deng Xiaoping point uh, Shenzhen as our first uh, renovation city. Uh, Shekou Industrial Park actually is the first uh, economical and the trade uh, development zone uh, in China. Uh, so it starts like a Chinese uh, industry um, green agenda. And then around the uh, 03, uh, from 96 to 03, actually we have been like a version two, which we call the high tech industrial development zone. And then from 03 to uh, 16, in, in, the, in the third generation, we call it a more like a because we are looking for more large city scale, like uh, the materials recycling, like the energy recycling, like the waste recycling, like the, um, yeah. So we, we have something we call the Vernus Industry uh, Park, which has been really fast growing from 03 to 16. And then in the last uh, uh, three, five years, we can see that uh, actually China is really driving more in the, we call the symbiosis, uh, industry park direction. It has been integrated with better uh, energy system, with uh, circular economy, uh, uh, symbiosis economy, and also the ecological uh, e economy. And also, it requires a more integrated uh, uh, approach, uh, not just to plan some uh, some we, we call it a warehouse, but also like uh, how can you be integrated with the urban functions? How can you be more you reduce the, 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 the urban impact? You know, conventionally we can see you know the industry parks like uh, chimneys plus some warehouse, but in a new way for this uh, more symbiosis green drivers. Actually, uh, China has been more focused on how how can we how can we make a park looks more like uh, harmonious with the urban development. Uh, this is something we have been uh, like uh, taking from our normal daily approach, but more like live up to the uh, more uh, global uh, standards, like uh, we call it the 4C. So we're trying to encourage the, the, the industry park or the local city trying to use the local resource as much as possible. We would like them to uh, trying to uh, integrate with more like uh, we call it the, as much uh, the, the your waste will be my resource. So the, the three R uh, principles. And then we also would like to say like uh, more companies like uh, like uh, Bottle Loop that they can, we can have more uh, symbiosis, economical values output when, when the recycling, when the materials cannot be recycled locally, but we, we would like to say, okay, if the waste from your chimney, maybe you can reuse it into your uh, building arch architecture materials. And this is something actually city can really thinking from the city scale, not just one plant. And then the, also right now, everyone can see we have more renewable energy uh, um, targets. So it's like uh, we would like to give the day one, the, the, the industry park. Okay, when you build this park, you have to consider maybe 50% 50, 50 of your energy resource should be renewable energy uh, resource, or maybe even 90%. Yeah. Uh, so last two minutes, I maybe two one minute. So I would like to share uh, just two of our ongoing projects. One is is in Changsha. Uh, we are working on uh, secure the land, and then the uh, our developer trying to focus on the the one I just uh, briefed so the four C uh, principle concept. So we build up this one thousand uh, mu uh, demonstration. Uh, uh, demonstration area trying to uh, synergies between the industries and the environment and the symbiosis and also the the, the economies. 
Um, another one is the park already been built in Datong. Uh, maybe we live in Beijing, so we know Datong used to be the, we call it the uh, black city or coal city, because uh, actually uh, Datong is providing the, that Datong is like a backbone of Beijing's energy system because they are famous, they have a lot of uh, coal, coal resource. But uh, like five years ago, Datong is trying to um, has the green transition from the black city to the to the we call it the green city. So uh, they have a lot of uh, PV uh, development goals like uh, e, e e car uh, goals, and also this project just in front of the new city government, and uh, this project is positioning as a zero carbon park. And then the, we made the, the we made the, the urban design uh, master plan and urban design and the building concept for this uh, plot. Okay, yes, thank you, Amon. Any questions? Thank you very much to uh, Miss Martinting of uh, Noi for the introduction to what you guys are doing in regards to this field and also the eco parks in, in particular and the projects in Changsha, there's a lot of interesting going on there as well. I would like to uh, uh, apologize to everyone uh, online as well as offline for us uh, going uh, a bit uh, over time, but we do have our final presentation. We will not be having time to do Q and A's today, but we have, uh, we still encourage you guys to send in your questions in the chat, uh, potentially with the email address, then we will uh, get back to uh, get, get back to you guys on uh, on the questions. So our final presentation for today will be from uh, Mr. Wu Hao of uh, PP Strail uh, company to uh, present the, their case here for us to uh, today. So I will just get the technique up and running here. So while the document is loading, just again, once again, saying that we will try to get back to all the questions that you guys have and still may send into the chat um, as soon as possible after the event today. And we will, of course, uh, try to incorporate the Q&A in our future events, but we simply have, uh, we're very fortunate to have a lot of speakers with us tonight. So, um, but we have loaded the document now and we will get the screen up just now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for your patience. Okay. All right. Lucky last. Um, I will probably have to really fly through this PPT, um, but uh, lucky we're in the aviation business and flying. That's basically what we do. Um, just basically introduction about myself. My name is Danny. I grew up in Australia. Uh, actually, so that's where I get my bit of a Australian accent and I'll just uh, try to go through this as quick as I can. Thank you. Um, just a basic introduction about what we do. We are in the general aviation industry. Basically, what it means is that other than military and uh, commercial airlines industry, everything else falls in the general aviation industry category. So things like policing, agriculture, spray, surveillance, etc. This is a relatively new industry in China, uh, as you can see in comparison with uh, uh, China statistic with the rest of the world. Um, basically, the airspace for China just only recently opened up since 2008 um, because of the earthquakes in, in Sichuan. China began to realize that there is a big factor involved in Chinese general aviation, moving in troops and rescue and development. So for the uh, 13 five-year plan, the Chinese general aviation development on a national basis, the goal is to build up another 500 new GA airports throughout the country and uh, to increase the aircraft, private aircraft from currently 2,800 to 5,000. That is a very, a very, a very ambitious goal. And to achieve 2 million of operational hours per year. And currently it's sitting about 760,000. And the national goal is by 2030, that there will be at least one GA airport in every county. So if in statistics speaking, that is equivalent to about 2,800 GA airports throughout the country. But in comparison with the United States, we're looking at there's about 19,000 GA airports in the United States. So even reaching to the point of one airport per county, you're basically only one third 
of the basic minimum of what the United States have. Uh, that's the basic general background what we do. Our company is known as People's Show. It's basically Latin word for bat. Uh, our founder, Evo, Mr. Evo Vascaro, has one of the pioneers of the aviation industry. This year, we celebrate the 31st year of our company. And uh, it's all started off in a small town of Albertina, which is next to the border of Italy. And uh, he's got his nickname from being the Batman in the sky because in the ex Yugoslavia, you also the airspace was, was restricted. So he can only fly during the night times. So the local gave him the nickname of the Batman. So that's basically where, where our name came from. We are very proud of our 31 years in history. And uh, we have right now more than 12 different certified aircraft around the world. Uh, given that certified means that it's, it has already received high certificates and is able to fly legally. In terms of R&D, we have more than 48 different R&D projects for military, NASA, YASA, civilian, et cetera, so across the world as well. So those are more of a focus on research and development. So in our capacity, we make one aircraft per working day. And uh, that is the right now the highest in the industry and, and in our competitors. Uh, we represent 97 different countries right across five different continents. So once again, our sales of the light sport uh, aircraft in a category also rank as number one in the world. Um, green and eco-friendly mobility has always been the uh, foundation philosophy of Pipistro. Now, when uh, Mr. Ivo Vascaro, the gentleman on the top left corner, when he set up the business, especially in the early 1990s, we believe that the future of aviation needs to coexist with eco-friendly and green mobility. But at the time, none of our competitors believed us because everybody thought when you have an aircraft, it's almost like buying a Harley. It has to be noisy. And of course, the price of fuel at that time is very cheap. So none of our competitors believe that in that principle and many of the laughers in our face. But when it comes to making of an aircraft, it's not so easy just make the aircraft fly, but you also have to go through the process of certification, industrialization, production, et cetera. So it takes normally about 10 years to in particular get one aircraft from the design phases all the way to the production phases. So that is one of the reasons why uh, up until today, all of our aircraft are very focused on eco-friendly and to green mobility. And that's one, one, is one of our advantages of being in the industry is with that we are one of the best and pioneers in the, in, in the sofa electric aircraft uh, industry. We have grown from a small factory in Adol China to a global corporation. We now have operation and manufacturing base in Italy, India, and also very soon in China as well. Um, just very quickly, uh, our team, basically we can customize for every customer's requirement based from the very beginning stage of uh, the lab design, which can be done now over the computers or 3D printers to molding the, the actual uh, test, test flight and certification and mass production. So we do everything in-house. So all the technology is owned by Pipistro, and we're very proud of that uh, achievement. And this is basically what our production assembly looks like. So to pump out one aircraft a day is uh, quite an achievable event. This is some of our most famous aircraft that is actually flying around the world right now. This is the, it's called the Virus SW. Everything is, we are the first to use uh, composite material. So basically it means that the aircraft is, uh, is very tough. The actual material can bend, unlike steel, it will break. So we can do a much more maneuvers where our competitors cannot do. So in terms of a technical wise, we go up to 5G to negative 2G, which means that it can uh, take under the, the pressure of five gravity uh, G-force G on itself without actually breaking up. Um, so far, it is also the only two-seater aircraft that has independently flying over the, the North Pole. This was done by a great Slovenian pilot in 2015. And because of his actions, he became the 2015 Global Flight Challenger winner. He's also he got the nickname, the Time Travel Traveler, because all the times around the world ends up in North Pole. So technically speaking, if you fly in one circle over the North Pole, you have simultaneously traveled to all the different time zones. So that's what we got the name, Time Travelers, and vice versa. Um, another one is our motor glider. It's, it's known as a Taurus motor glider. And our most famous recent development is a four-seater Panthera. And uh, this aircraft, as you can see, it comes in three different categories. We have the, the Afghan, uh, the Mogas version, the electric version, also one of the latest technology, which is the hybrid engine. Uh, and this aircraft, as you can see, is the state of the art. It's basically the Formula One you can get in aviation. Uh, everything you can see is leather seating to, and its rank has one of the fastest uh, single engine civilian aircraft ranging up the speed up to 440 k per hour. 
that's very fast. And the flying distance of 2,000 kilometers. Yeah. Now, in terms of echo and green mobility, now a lot of people doesn't know this, but it's a fact that uh, the first ever electric aircraft was created by PBS in 2007. So we have created the world's first two-seater electric aircraft in 2007, the world's first four-seater electric aircraft in 2011. And since until then, as you can see on this, on this page here, we have developed more than 10 different types of prototype and the products in terms of electric and new energy itself. Now, all of these aircraft has been designed and developed last in the past 10 years. And we're to, and basically, uh, we are now actually in a stage of implementing and installing our even uh, smart charger right across general aviation airports right across Europe. So Pipistro is no longer the only player in the uh, electric aircraft industry, but we are in many ways the, also the policy maker of aviation industry as well. Because like I mentioned before, uh, one of the real difficulty is getting the certification process. So which means that the regulatory department got to have the, the laws and regulation to govern you. So if you create something as new as an electric aircraft, where the regulatory department doesn't even have the such relevant uh, regulation that govern you, it creates a problem. So basically, we have to help uh, the relevant departments to draft the relevant uh, regulations that can actually govern on us in reverse. So in terms of the uh, electric aircraft, we can say, look, up until today, there's more than 200 companies now um, actually in the game of electric aircraft, but Pipistro is the only one that we are in production stages. And uh, as of 2020, we have developed de uh, deliver more than 200 electric aircraft already across the world. In terms of comparison, now other than eco-friendly, as you can see in the cost structure of our usage of the aircraft, it reduces the cost of the electric aircraft by more than 90%. So compared to a conventional fuel um, injector engine, um, basically our usage of uh, electricity is less than one euro per hour. Now that's basically mean it's literally for free. So when this concept has been observed to fly school, the operational cost of the aircraft has been cut down by more than 90% down to less than 33 euros per hour. And that's in, including depreciation, overhauls, repairs and maintenance, insurance, and uh, also the cost of, the, of everything associated with electric aircraft. So for fly school, and I think for the future of uh, mobility, it means things are cheaper for the, over, for the global markets. And by 2007, we also made another history by preparing the world first two-seater glider, which is the electric propulsion. And the way we did it is that we made a trailer, as you can see, with an electric uh, solar panel on top. And together, this is the first time ever human can actually fly for free. You no longer need any power. Uh, so this is our concept, fly for free. And because of such, we have been nominated as the 10 top uh, innovation, uh, uh, innovative scientific achievement in the year 2008. This year in 2020, we have also made history again with our latest E811 uh, electric motor. Uh, we have spent almost close to 10 years on the development of this uh, electric motor. And this year it has been uh, the first ever electric motor that has been certified by YASA. Now this is a great achievement. YASA is basically the agency that governs civil aviation of, of uh, European Union. Uh, which means that these type certificates of uh, previous reveals electric aircraft is a milestone in aviation history because from this point on, uh, the uses of commercial use of electric aircraft making emission-free aviation feasible. Uh, so this has been the biggest achievement by Pipistro uh, this year. And also this aircraft has also been certified. It's also the world's first electric certified aircraft by YASA. So global aviation, we have come a long way, just, you know, but people, you have to remember, it's only been the 1920s that uh, people began to fly. So just looking back over the 100 years, we came a long way from uh, trial flight by a single passenger all the way to commercial jet, jet engine, and now we are fully developed into the electric flying ages. And to summarize everything in a quick video, this is basically what we do at PBS Drill.
the hatch and see the noise is very is very low as well. This is the world hybrid engine. It's the world first. Yep. And also the hydrogen fuel cell, which you just saw, this is not a development. Um, well, a, a lot of our competitors is actually in the research phases of hydrogen fuel cell development. We have already test flown the hydrogen fuel cell aircraft back in 2016. So our next plan, uh, although I know the Sebastian uh, PPT has also mentioned earlier that uh, EU initiative is hoped to achieve a commercial large zero emission aircraft by 2035. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this will be the 19 seater. Yeah. So which way you have to go from medium to large. Very good. Yeah. And uh, we are, but we are very ambitious on this. We are hoping to launch this in as early as 2028. So it's a lot more um, earlier than what the, our competitors is doing. Now, when you ask about aviation, do you ask yourself the question, is this the peak? In aviation, we only believe there is something called better. We never believe in the best. Now, the second fo focus I want to touch base on is the vertical takeoff and landing. This is probably something you will hear from now on more and more because this is the, initiated by the project, uh, the company of Uber. And basically, its initiative is to have signed contract with 500 mega cities across the globe. And by the time of 2032, it will start implementing 500 electric and automated uh, aircraft throughout, the, throughout the, uh, the world, including Shanghai here in China. And the future, basically, the concept is that from original travel, uh, what we have, you know, the ground level from the building down to the ground, to the subway, back to the taxi, in the future, everything else will be in the sky, especially, uh, and all of this will be done in, in electric as well. So we're very proud that uh, People's Show is one of the five uh, international uh, corporation of Uber on this. And uh, the future of uh, traveling might look like something like this. But the good thing about this, it will be totally zero emission. So this will revolutionize the entire way that we travel as we know it. And of course, one of the other aspects is that for every six, six minutes, every one hour congestion on the land, everything can be done and transferred from point A to point B in a less than six minutes. And if you think this is science fiction, just watch this ad by Uber. Now it's slogan, closer than you think. Uh, now, as of this year, uh, if it weren't for the uh, coronavirus, this concept was supposed to be launched at this year's World Expo. So um, I know uh, many international cities, such as uh, London, for example, has already started the trial from transportation from the Heathrow International Airport to downtown CBD. So think of the formation of transit from horses to car. Back in, you think about it, you know, less than 100 years ago, everybody's still riding on horses. Now, if for China, that is even closer. Who would have who thought in the 1990s, if you tell people on the streets that you're going to have a car one day, who would have believed you? So I think in terms of this sort of type of innovation uh, to be launched by 2030 to 35, it is, it is realistic and uh, it will definitely revolutionize the way we travel.
And this is our people's role con our concept, which has only been released uh, last year. We're taking a lot of the technical development we have done for the past 30, 31 years, because time-wise, I will not go into too much of a technical detail. And also for cargoes as well. Uh, this is what we also developed this year for uh, armaments, which is a payload of up to 300 kilos as well. And this is also fully electric as well. Now, so what does it all mean for people in China? Now, basically, uh, the final, to, before I wrap up, just an introduction of what we are doing here in China. Um, this project, uh, with the support of the Slovenian government and the relevant departments in China, has been one of the largest cooperation between the two countries. And it was signed as an important project between uh, Slovenia and China at the, at the 16 plus one forum. And this is our certification procedures in China. And we are also setting up a production facility of an industrial park in the, in the province of Jiangsu, with a small town known as uh, Jurong, which is a small garden city right next to Nanjing. And uh, this is where we are bringing in the electric aircraft and also the hybrid engine four-seater aircraft for not only China alone, but also the 15 countries surrounding that as well. So it is one of our prime initiative for the Asia Pacific region, uh, not only on just bringing in the production of aircraft, but also in the eco-friendly as well of green flights. And uh, that's basically our R&D center and factory has been completed this year. So production is expected by the end of next year. And that's basically my PPD. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Mr. Danny Wu of PB Strel to uh, have us end on a high note and really fly us home to the end of, uh, <laughs> of the presentation today. But before you guys uh, tune out uh, online, I would like to share